Welcome to Classical Kids Storytime from American Public Media. I'm Valerie, and this is the story of the Emperor's New Clothes. Once upon a time, many, many years ago, there lived an emperor. Do you know what an emperor is? It's like a bigger, fancier, more powerful version of a king. So, a long time ago, there was an emperor who loved clothes. In fact, he was so extremely fond of new clothes that he spent all his money on clothes. Now, it's one thing to like looking nice, even to like looking fancy. But this emperor was out of control. All he did was look at clothes and try on clothes and order new clothes to be made and change his clothes five or six times a day just for fun. That was all he did. He didn't meet with his generals and soldiers. He didn't listen to the legal disagreements of his subjects. He didn't communicate with neighboring kings and queens about what was going on. He didn't even go to the theater or concerts. One day, a couple of crooks came to town. Now, these were not the kind of crooks who just quietly kept to themselves and stole wallets in the marketplace or snuck into people's houses to swipe their jewels. No, these were sneakier crooks the kind who convinced people to give them their money willingly. See, they pretended that they were weavers, fabric makers. They introduced themselves to everybody in town, and they displayed a few samples of gorgeously woven, very expensive fabrics. And the people oohed and awed. You think this stuff is nice, they said. Wait till you see our newest fabric. It is just as beautifully woven. The colors are absolutely brilliant. And, they continued slyly, it has a very useful way of becoming invisible to anyone who's unqualified for his or her job, or is just not so smart in general. Eventually, of course, the emperor heard about this miraculous fabric. Oh, wow, he thought, clothes made from this fabric would be perfect. Not only would I look spectacular, I'd also be able to see who works in my court, who shouldn't be working in my court. And I'll be able to tell the wise people from the foolish. Yep, gotta have it. And so he gave the two crooks a huge amount of money to start weaving this fabric right away. They also demanded heaps and heaps of imported silk thread, peacock blue and brilliant orange, sunburst yellow and forest green and in all the jeweled colors there were, ruby, sapphire, amethyst, emerald, as well as the finest spun silver and gold. They set up two looms and they pretended to weave, but because they were crooks, there wasn't actually anything on the looms. All that expensive thread went right into their suitcases while they continued to work the empty looms all day and late into the night. The whole town knew about the fabric's special powers, and everybody was just dying to find out how foolish their neighbors were. The emperor was also curious about how things were going. I'll send my oldest, most trusted advisor to the weavers, the emperor decided. He is so sensible and practical, and nobody's better at his job. He'll be the best one to tell me how this cloth looks. So the honest old advisor went to the room where the two crooks sat working away at their empty looms. Oh no, he thought, as he looked everywhere around the room in a panic. I can't see anything at all. But he didn't say that. He thought to himself, am I, am I stupid? Am I a fool? This, you see, is what the crooks were counting on. One of the crooks said, So, what do you think? Isn't it just the most remarkable thing you've ever seen? Oh, it's, 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 uh, it's beautiful. It's enchanting, the old advisor said. What a pattern. And those colors. I can't wait to tell the emperor how delightful it is. The next day, the emperor sent another trusted official to check out the fabric and to find out how soon it would be ready. Same thing happened to him that had happened to the first advisor. He looked and looked, but he couldn't see anything. I know I'm not stupid, 
the man thought. So it must be that I'm not qualified for my position in the emperor's court. Wow, I can't let anyone find out about this. So just like the other man had done, he complimented the weavers on their artistry. Now the emperor wanted to see it for himself while it was still on the looms. He and his entourage arrived to find the crooks working furiously at the looms, the empty looms. Magnificent, said the two officials who'd already been there. Just look, your majesty, what colors, what a design. They pointed to the empty looms, both assuming that everyone else could see the miraculous fabric. What's this, thought the emperor. I can't see anything. This is terrible. Am I a fool? Am I unfit to be emperor? This can't be happening. But he had to say something. So finally, he spoke. Oh, it's, it's very pretty, he said. It has my highest approval. Nothing would make him say that he couldn't see anything. Everybody in the room stared and stared, and nobody was willing to admit that they saw nothing on the looms. So pretty, yes, yeah, so pretty. For sure, it's stunning. The most remarkable thing I've ever seen. And they all said, this will make the most splendid outfit for you to wear at the big parade tomorrow. The emperor nodded to the two crooks, who bowed their agreement and thanks. They promised the emperor they'd work all night long to finish his garment. The next day, the emperor came with his noblest nobleman, and the crooks both raised an arm like they were holding something. These are the trousers, here's the coat, and this is the royal robe, they said. They are all as light as a spider web. You'd almost think you had nothing on, but that is the mark of the finest craftsmanship. This is truly our crowning achievement. If your Imperial Majesty will agree to step out of your current attire, said the crooks, we will help you on with your new clothes out here in front of the long mirror. <gasps> your Majesty's new clothes look so beautiful, aren't they magnificent? <gasps> that pattern's so perfect. Those colors are exquisite, and so on. Everyone in the room had something to say in praise of the clothes and the fabric and the so-called weavers. And then the Minister of Public Processions announced, Your Majesty's canopy is waiting outside. So off went the Emperor at the head of the procession. The streets were lined with people, 20 deep on both sides. And all the windows on both sides of the street were crowned with more people watching the parade. And every single person said, Oh, how wonderful the emperor's new clothes are. Don't they fit him to perfection? Don't you love that? None of them would confess that they couldn't see anything. Until one little girl said, But he hasn't got anything on. Did you, <laughs> did you ever hear such adorable nonsense, said her father nervously. But one person whispered to another what they'd heard the girl say. He hasn't got anything on. A child says he hasn't got anything on. But he hasn't got anything on, the entire town finally said aloud. The emperor shivered because he suspected they were right and also because he was cold, since he was just marching down the street in his underpants. But he was very proud, and he thought it would be better to pretend that he and his court were the only people in the entire town who were smart enough to see the magical clothing than it would be to admit that he'd been fooled by the two crooks. The emperor had always demanded absolute agreement from his advisors, but that day, he learned that what he really needed was someone to tell him the truth, no matter how difficult it was. The townspeople learned how easy it is to believe a lie when everyone is afraid to speak up. And the little girl learned that it's important to tell the truth, even if you're the only one doing it. The End
Thanks for listening to Classical Kids Storytime from APM American Public Media.